prologue. Leslie Steele. Lieutenant Leslie Steele sat patiently cross-legged awaiting the arrival of the Lord Commissioner, Ray Bradley Warren, and the informant escorted by medical staff. Leslie arrived 15 minutes early, expecting at least a lethargy level of punctuality from her uncle. The lieutenant had no idea why she, of all people, got brought here. The Lord Commissioner bustled inside the room, utilizing a cane to move around the room. A walking stick around seven feet tall to support his aging frame worn from a long life of battle. He crossed the room, almost missing his niece who was quieter than a church mouse. She stood up abruptly and saluted before quickly returning to her seat, bowing her head as she waited him to sit, ignoring the lumbering and shuffling as he fiddled with his oversized chair to support his nearly one-ton frame. He finally sat, taking a deep breath and resting his walking stick on the table, keeping a firm grip on his handle. He panted, catching his breath as he tried to speak, only managing to cough and grab a drink of water to clear his throat. You go from being the picture of good health to being an adult old man in little over a year? How did you degrade so quickly? You think your uncle has lost a step? I think you've lost a lot, Uncle. The weight of the crown breaks most people's necks. I feel like he lost everything. I still have you. I will never betray you, Uncle. It's just... I know there are... Well... Enemies are not fond of our family. You think I want to tell you all my generals have turned their backs on my reign as Lord Commissioner? Ray wore a solemn expression. You know? Leslie said, stunned. <sighs> Sim Perrier isn't naked. Well, this emperor isn't an emperor at all. A mountain boy wanted to fight the people buying up the mountains. Now the boy is working for the people buying up the mountains. Ray rubbed his temples, taking a deep sigh. They plan to reject you as Lord Commissioner. We plan a full-scale rebellion if you don't step down by harvest season. They know whoever leads during the harvest gets all the credit for the harvest. We have less than eight months to plan a counterattack, Leslie. I have to step down as Lord Commissioner. What? What? No. He can't step down, Leslie knocked her chair across the room as she stood, her aura lighting up around her as she shouted. She quickly quiets down, containing herself and calms down her spiraling aura as she tries to process the gravity on her uncle's face. Leslie shook her head, realizing she was too late to defend her uncle's claim. And the campaign against him had already begun with red tape and second-guessing his every decision. Taking part in the murder of Colin Gregor felt like a treachery throughout the regime. A dog never bites the hand that feeds, and in their minds, Colin fed every single last one from his hand. He felt like the only man in Urdu who knew a bull grazes alone. The rest responded only to authority and violence. With the regime overtaking Urdu, the entire culture became a testament to war. None of them knew peace. Most were too young to know a life before the war. Ray was only a boy himself when the wars began and a teenager when their fathers forced their sons into conscription for the Urdu army. He knew little else outside of life and warfare, but he remembered the peace, the prosperity, and the path Urdu had been in his childhood. You can't stop it. I can tell by your shock that you slowly realize it. We're both powerless to stop what's happening. I'm powerless to defend Urdu from these pups playing big dog and unarmed civilians as a lifestyle. They refuse to give up what destroys our region. They feel so strongly against the world. It's a pathway to foolishness, and it's a war we sadly can't win. What do you mean? Our regimes never stood against another nation's army. 
Their civilians on the border territories protecting their ancestral homeland are terrorists to move in the Nakans and Mayans. Urdu blood spilled for other nations on their forefather's soil. I failed. Ray covered his face in his massive hands, attempting to fight his sobbing. There has to be something. There is someone. The reason we're meeting today. There are reports of incidents in Nadia. A war fought and won. But at least from the casualties, it appears there was a war. Naka is preparing to march on the region. The regime is to flank Nadia. And if the mines are to shut off the waterways, they're going to attempt to take Nadia for themselves. I know a man who would fight an army alone. If we're thinking of the same man, he's dead. Yes, we attended a funeral, a memorial, yet we never saw a body or heard word of a body. He's alive. Leslie clumps their fish with anticipation. I've seen him. I've spoken with him and fought by his side to slay in Shishi. He is alive and well. Ray smiled briefly, seeing the relief flood over his niece. Is he your informant? Leslie cheered as a pink oar wrapped around her, and flowers began to bloom around her feet. The informant will give us a better sense of what happened and where he stands in helping us deal with things here in Urdu. If he's about to go to war, then he has little time to help our issues. He could end the war. Does he know they're forcing you out of your job? It's more than a job. It's a responsibility. It's the weight of the world on one man's shoulders to be the guardian against the destruction of Gaia and her children. Ray began. I know he can bear the weight. He has been alive for many years. If he wanted to hold the weight, he would have taken it from the older man a long time ago. He doesn't want to be Lord Commissioner. I doubt he wants the regime and the knocking military murdering his citizens either, Uncle. He's a good guy. He is responsible for 500 deaths, and some reports say 1,000 due to some cult activity in Nadia. He was the one man who stood against our army then hid. Sadly, I don't think his mind is on saving the regulative regime. Before his funeral, those reports from years ago, he killed our Rottweiler legionnaire, Syntax Ego. He died fighting them. Leslie quieted down, remembering the boy she had spent her childhood with, but they had chosen separate paths as adults. She stayed close to the light and order, believing justice would prevail. He never saw justice more efficient than wrath. And her uncle's what created that monster inside him, the beast he calls Luno. Leslie mauled the idea over, thinking how ironic fate felt. The only man trade to be Lord Commissioner refused the responsibility. I have a small formality we must go through before our friend arrives. What is it, uncle? Ray let go of his magnetic rod, keeping his body intact without utilizing energy. He stood without difficulty, letting go of the metal cane and being more flexible with every molecule kept rigidly in place. It was as if the rod increased the force of gravity, keeping him composed. Without it, he phased through the desk as a fit of sands were forming before his knees on one knee. I have never chosen a steel veil. The steel veil is the warden of Urdu. A veil acts purely in the will and interest of Gaia, which cannot speak or defend herself against her children. All Gaia can do is nourish. The veil protects those who protect Gaia and her children. The veil must bring justice to all those who abuse Gaia and her children. I had never chosen a veil in my decades of leading the regime. 
I hope one day one of my protégés may continue my actual work as Lord Commissioner long after I leave. I've postponed the Great War in the name of peace, but they have, fought, they have found ways to turn the war on the children of Gaia, to make ways for more locusts bleeding her dry. I'm committed to protecting the true king of Nadia. Soon I must leave the protection of Gaia to you. Will you accept the responsibility as the steel veil and to help shoulder the weight of the world? I will. I absolutely will, Uncle. Leslie stood saluting, trying to stop the flowers growing in her hair from excitement. And so it is done. As Gaia and God, as I witness, you are the protector of Gaia and my steed. Upon my death, you will become the new guardian of Gaia. Don't speak of such things. I must. I will have eight months to train you for taking on the regulated regime, in case he doesn't believe this is his concern. This is his home. He was born and raised in Urdu. Ray rose to his feet, turning his back on Leslie. Nadia is his home. Nadia has always been his home. As much as I wanted him to be our doom, to be my successor and to lead this war, all I want now is for the war to stop, and they refuse to allow me to call off our troops. They've planned something massive, something already in the works beyond even their control. I have left the Order of the Sun Lotus, and I've joined the King's Guard. I suppose I have a little time to waste. Leslie felt no different. There is no cloth, no badge or plaque with her name to show people. All she would ever have is this meeting, her uncle's word, and God and Gaia waiting for her to fulfill their will on their behalf. Leslie felt no different, but the air in the room felt heavier. She pondered on what else she didn't know. Her childhood friend had been alive after believing him dead. If her uncle got forced out of being Lord Commissioner and she was too late to defend him, what else has she failed to learn or realize? Leslie felt her throat tighten from the anxiety, feeling like an imposter. She reached for some water to find her uncle holding on out his glass. We will begin your training this evening. It will be strenuous, but when you've completed your training, you will know you're worthy of protecting Gaia, he reassures Leslie. Thank you again, Uncle. Leslie held her through it, massaging it until she felt familiar energy in the air. The energy grew in intensity. It felt like a wild beast from the void had entered the halls. Leslie stood up, bracing herself, putting her body in between her, Uncle, and the energy outside the door, far more potent than she could imagine possible. Then suddenly, the energy level dropped completely, throwing Leslie off guard. Shocked as a gurney was wheeled into the room and quickly set up with oxygen, life support, and fluids, the energy level began rising as Leslie looked over the familiar woman she hadn't seen in years. Carmen Cruz is your informant, Leslie muttered as she studied Carmen's body. Seeking a wound until she saw her entire heart had been missing from her body. A gaping hole in Carmen's chest as the doctors and nurses worked to set her up. Still, she was alive. Leslie covered her mouth sitting down. For the first time in her life feeling mercy for Carmen. Leslie watched as the physicians worked around the room and then stepped aside, leaving the Lord Commissioner's gurney. The doctors saluted their leader, then left the room. At least the hospital support still supported the Lord Commissioner. Thank you for joining us in your critical condition, Sergeant Cruz. The Lord Commissioner showed all the respect in the world. It's but a flesh wound. Carmen winced, attempting to sit up to look at him, but fell, staring at the ceiling and taking a deep breath. What happened to you? Leslie held her hand over her mouth, moving to closer to Carmen, looking over her childhood rival. Haley, Carmen said weakly. 
Haley Greger did this to you? The Lord Commissioner was in disbelief. I exposed her, and she tried to kill me. Carmen took long, labored breaths. You and Haley were best friends, I, I thought. Exposed her for what? What the hell happened? Leslie was puzzled, trying to piece together how Colin Gregor's two favorite pupils turned on one another in his death. Morgan saved me. It was Haley, and Haley tried to kill Natalie. Morgan sent me here. Leslie sucked her teeth at the mention of his name, feeling sick to her stomach seeing Carmen's condition. Leslie wondered what would have happened to her, her if she interfered in this insane love life. Leslie followed both Natalie and Haley on the gram. Both had loving pictures with him in their profile. While it seems their lives were falling apart, her aching heart felt broken to pieces hearing Carmen's news. Why would Nadia's king send you to the regulator regime, Ray asked dutifully. He had Natalie hostage. A local mass killed Natalie, and then Haley turned to kill me. Morgan killed the series of people at the meeting. So the reports and my suspicions are correct. The king is snapped under the pressure of leadership. Ray released a sigh. No, no. Naka attacked first. Infiltrated. War. Naka wants war. He wants peace. Carmen strained, trying to restrict her excitement as her heart rate increased drastically. Where is he now? Carmen held up her hand as she tried to take a few deep breaths. I thought you knew everything, Leslie mocked. I don't know. The full moon burned down his house, his pregnant girlfriend got kidnapped, and Natalie stole all his money. I don't know what he's planning on doing to retaliate. Carmen expressed after I had falls in exhaustion. Can you continue speaking? Ray asked patiently. Carmen held up a thumb, though she still attempted to catch her fleeting breaths. Ray sat at his desk, clearing his throat to take over the conversation. He lifted a stack of papers, thumbing through the briefings as he figured out a way to ask his questions. Is Morgan planning to go to war? Ray asks. Yes, Carbon states. Does he believe Naka or Urdu are his enemies? It's the order of the full moon, Carbon stresses. Ray was taken aback by the name. It's what he hadn't heard in decades, but was familiar with the danger, having fought it once before alongside Colin. Colin had a not encyclopedic knowledge of the ancient orders and societies of Gaia. So Morden and Midoriya created it to combat the other secret society. He stood witness to the disseverment of the Sun Lotus, to believe they arranged the new order so quickly. Or... Had that been their plan all along? Morden Wolf is leading the assault. I imagine. I have reports of nearly 1,000 dead knockins on Nadian soil. Are those all due to Morgan? The Lord Commissioner asked for confirmation. Yes and yes, Carmen states. What about the Mirashira family? Were they involved? Ray acts with a heavy heart. You think Anada had some part to play in this, Uncle Ray? Leslie asked, shocked. The Mirashima were the only ones which could have helped set up an attack against the king. Unless one of his wives betrayed him, I doubt they would ever do that, even with their trust issues with Haley. They protect their own, Carmen reported, sitting up straight. Minoria spoke to me about a second order before Colin's death. He said our greatest interest was preventing the wedding between Haley Gregor and the Vicar of Ether. The greatest threat to global security would be the union between Nshishi and Luno by the equal right. Uncle, check this out. Leslie held up her phone, recalling an image she saw earlier. I don't have time for your phone right now. It's imperative, Leslie informs. 
Ray relented, trusting in his steel veil and grabbing the cell phone with his massive hands. He saw a scaled finger wearing a diamond-studded ring. Princess cut rose gold ring. She peered up to the name of the profile, spotting Haley the victorious Samira. They married already. When was this held? Where was the ceremony? Why wasn't I invited? The Lord Commissioner fumbled about, flustered at the news. Taking care of the ops and marrying my baby makes me feel like a new woman. Hashtag bodies. Hashtag do we have a problem. Leslie reads the picture's caption out loud. They're married? Carmen roared as her energy spiked and her heart rate spiked, causing the machine to flatline. Unable to read as electricity began crackling around Carmen. Blood began pouring from the empty hole in Carmen's chest. She went back to bed. Her body curled from pain as she began pressing the emergency button as quickly as possible. There was little Carmen didn't know. Their marriage announcements called cardiac arrest. The medics rushed into the room, beginning to stop the abnormal bleeding from the heartless woman. As the lightning died down, Carmen's gurney was run out of the Lord Commissioner's office, leaving the family reeling from the news. He's married, Leslie frowned. Leslie felt more hurt by the idea of him wedding Haley than the reports of murder at his hands. Leslie struggled to feel anger, sadness and her, believing he was lost forever. The boy she thought was dead, she never met the man he had become. And now he was the king of a rival region set to war against the regulated regime's most significant donor in Naka. However, her focus was no longer on the regime, but Urdu and Gaia at large. War was coming. Leslie could feel it in her ancient blood. War was inevitable and unstoppable at this point that was clear enough. What was unclear was what side she would be defending. Would she stand with her childhood friend against this new secret society, or would she have to defend Urdu against both? Where are you going, Leslie? The Lord Collegial Commissioner asked as Leslie began marching to the door. I have to go to Nadia. I need to see this new king for myself. Go discreetly, as the steel veil... The regulated regime cannot protect you if you cause a national disaster. Keep this in mind. If you leave Urdu, you would be on your own operating to protect Gaia. I understand. You would be walking into the lines and without training as well, Oracle notes. Leslie Gold, remembering Carmen's wound. Next to Morgan, Carmen was one of the regime's strongest soldiers. I have to see him, Uncle. I have to talk to Morgan. Leslie couldn't stir fish in primal rage. After your training, you will be ready. For now, I cannot afford to lose you. Her uncle bowed his head, pleading as best he could. He knew he didn't have the authority to stop her if she chose to leave. Leslie's rage called for her to fly out to Nadia as quickly as possible. But she took a deep breath, resuming her seat, conceding. Leslie didn't speak, unable to cope with her decision to postpone seeing her lifelong friend. She convinced herself the boy she knew was dead. Whoever was running around in his body was an unknown foe. It had been years since Leslie took her training seriously. Before Morgan had initially left, he had the power to fight in war single-handedly. Leslie's wisdom told her to be obedient to her uncle's training. It wouldn't last too long, and then she could walk into Nadia fearlessly.